are hoping to achieve a world first in the process. Uh, John McGuire has been following their journey and I think every time we show you those pictures of seagulls flying past on the drone shot as well, look at that. We all want to be in North Devon with you this morning, John. Yeah, and you'd be very welcome too, Dan. It'd be great to see you. Beautiful day here on shore. Conditions are absolutely fine, but that's not what this is all about. This is about five former service personnel, all carrying, carrying life-changing injuries, who are going to take on this incredible expedition, this incredible challenge. What it's also about is the conditions out to sea, because for the next couple of days, that's what they're going to be up against. And I can tell you, it's not easy. For the next 30 days or more, this is how Darren Edwards will start his mornings. <laughs> Along with four comrades, all ex-servicemen who sustained life-changing injuries, the team is attempting to kayak 1,400 kilometres from Land's End to John O'Groats. It will be a world first for what's known as an adaptive team. We've all been through similar experiences in life. I stepped in an IUD, damaged my left leg. You know, we've all been through different levels of trauma. Uh, I was out in operations. I took seven rounds and blast fragmentation to my chest um, and both arms. I've had my arm reconstructed from, from the elbow down. So when I went in with a 50-60% chance of losing my arm and I came out with 50% functionality. Training has been intense. The open sea presents new challenges, especially for Darren, who's paralysed from the chest down after a climbing accident and can't use his legs for balance. Their support boat is taking them out to sea, ready to resume their odyssey off the north coast of Cornwall and Devon. So far, they've managed to paddle two out of three days since starting on the weekend. Day three, things are going pretty well so far. Couldn't paddle yesterday because of extreme headwinds and the first day a lot of seasickness. So let's see how today pans out. But conditions once again proved hazardous and the team was thwarted. Well, as if you needed any proof of just how tough this challenge is going to be. Once again, the weather conditions have prevailed. They've had to sack it for today and we'll give it a go again tomorrow. It didn't take long for us to realise that once we got out, the conditions were more than we can handle. So I think we know our limits as a collective, which is good. Um, and also there was a question mark whether the actual safety boat would be able to make it back. So it, you know, it was a no brainer really to turn around and do the safe thing. Known as Kayak for Heroes, the expedition is aiming to raise £100,000 for the Armed Forces Para Snowsport team. It's a charity that's already played a part in their rehabilitation, and this challenge will do more to help. Unfortunately, in February of 2020, I tried to take my own life. Um, I was really down in the dumps and not in a great place. So I reached out for help eventually, um, and I got the support I needed when I eventually ha asked for it and it took me a long time to come round to that. We all as a team have been through our own mental health sort of challenges and battles with our injuries and things that have followed but we've proved at every step that by being positive, by you know remaining active that you can kind of keep on top of that. Um, so yeah so the challenge is physical because it's you know paddling 1,400 kilometres but so much of it is is in the mind. Their route will take them along the southwest coast up to Gloucestershire, where they'll then use rivers and canals to head north to Liverpool. Back out to sea up the northwest coast of England, then into Scotland, including the Caledonian Canal and Loch Ness, then onto John O'Groats. It's a mammoth undertaking. I'm not really a sea person, which is really bizarre for someone that's kayaking, lands into John O'Groats. You know, I'm more comfortable on land, I'm a runner. So when I got involved in this, I was like, it sounds crazy, it sounds horrific, I'm not comfortable out at sea, but I'll give it a go, you know, it's, it's all about pushing your comfort zone, you know, really, really testing yourself. Physically very tough, mentally extremely demanding. This is a challenge that will require everything from these men, not just as individuals, but above all, as a team. 
So you can see the support boat there, that's the rib with one of the kayaks on the side. The other one's just next to me at the moment. That will now motor down to Bude, and that's the point at which the guys reached on Sunday, the last time they were able to paddle. And then their next objective will be Ilfracombe, and then back up the country as we go along. Luke and Carl, raring to go, ready to go this morning. Luke, uh, sorry, Carl, tell me... Uh, how did you get involved? What, what, why did you get involved in this expedition? So initially, Darren came up with the crazy idea of uh, kayaking the jog. And as we'd all met through uh, um, the Armed Forces Para Snow Sport Team charity, um, he picked the people he wanted, asked us, and everyone basically said yes. And, uh, what's it done for you? What's not only the snow sport done for you, but being part of this? The main aim for me, personally, is about raising the funds so I can continue to help other injured and wounded um, soldiers in having a journey to go forward and, and we use snow sports as that transport so basically helping people in the future is the main aim and we need the funds to, to be able to do that. Of course and it's helping you also? Uh, normally I, I, I focus my time on supporting others as my way of getting what I want from it and that seems to work for me personally so I get a lot of benefit from actually helping others. That helps me. That's that's part of your... That's my transition or my, my way to, to deal with things. Yeah. Um, what's the paddling been like first couple of days? So the first day was a little bit sketchy and both Luke and myself had a, a, a near miss, but uh, we, were, we were able to save it. And the following day was good. But unfortunately, we've had two not so great weather days, which were not safe to paddle. And then hopefully now we've got three further days that we can uh, make some good progress. And it's, it's as much a physical challenge and an incredible physical challenge as a mental one, I assume. I think the mental side is, is more of a challenge than the physical because you're having to focus on the, the long journey of, of paddling day after day after day. And, and it's not just the paddling, it's the whole getting here, getting the rib in, getting set up, getting to where your start point is. And then all the opposite things, the administration after the paddling. So the paddling ends up being six to eight hours. Yeah but the whole rest of it can take another three, four, five hours. Right. So they're long days. Yeah, absolutely. So the jokes need to be pretty good. The banter needs to be pretty good. Yeah, we've got it? good banter on right. this boat. Good on you. Carl and Luke, we're going to set you off. And as we do, uh, I think, hopefully we're going to get this right. Carl is going to just give us a little bit of a running commentary on how it's working. As I say, extremely light boats. These are actually surface the truck kayaks. But uh, they do hope to complete about 50 Okay, we're going to have to get out. Today. Get out. But uh, that's because the, um, the rudder and the roof is quite... There we are. Much better. OK, uh, you ready, Luke? And OK, and let's off. start paddling. Once we get going on flat water like this, they go yeah, pretty we're all set well. Up. There we are. You can keep track of them across social media platforms. Yeah, I think it should so be, yeah. give you an idea of where they've been, where they're going to next, if you want to catch good. up with them. And that'll also give you an idea of their fundraising as well. But yeah, uh, I'm not quite sure how far they've yeah, been Yeah, it'd be so great far. if uh, we can get uh, everyone donating. It'd be uh, great if so they could go on to the website matter, and follow us at www. 1,300 kilometres to go. Uh, kayakforheroes.co.uk or even donate you can, you can hear them as they uh, chat uh, going off into the distance John as well oh what a beautiful sight very good luck to them thank you very much indeed it's been wonderful to be out and about with them this morning and a slight issue setting off there but once they sort of you know that, that out feeling? It's it was just beautiful so, you know, anyway you get in and then you've got to get out again okay, look, Louise look at that just, just think once you've finished on this sofa you can go, you can go do that on a morning somewhere <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Best of oh, luck, as I said. Good. Wonderful. That's lovely, isn't it? We had to do that earlier because of the tides, which is... Yeah, I'm, well, I'm glad they've set they off. Too. And as John says, you can follow that and uh, I'm sure we'll be dipping into them over the next uh, course of the next few days as well. Um, it may have been tears for Scotland fan last night, but a junior football club in Glasgow has been watching.